below how you found me if you're a return subscriber thank you for tuning back in to see my face and as you guys can tell this is going to be a similar yet different show i mean segment on my channel if you guys saw before i've done like everything wrong with the vampire diaries or like why avatar the last airbender is top tier the show not anything else and I just wanted to like I've been seeing like you know other people on YouTube be like oh doctor watches medical show or a lawyer watches um a lawyering show or whatever or like somebody will be like oh a screenwriter watching you know like a cringe movie like after or or kissing booth or whatever and so I was like you know what all these specialist people are doing all this stuff and I want a little piece of the action but I have no certification and no qualifications. So as the title told y'all, this is a regular person's analysis review. Like, so I'm going to be doing shows. You guys can recommend some for me if you would like. I will do, be doing shows that I've watched, okay? And if you guys want to leave movies too, we can do those. But as I told my title, we are doing Georgia and Jenny. It's the new Netflix show. It came out a couple weeks ago. And the main character is a girl named, her name is Virginia, but she goes by Jenny and her mom, Georgia. They do, she does have a little brother named Austin, but it mo it mainly surrounds her mother and her. So yeah, without dragging this on more, let's get into it. Okay, so before we get started, with like the deep analysis or my version of a deep analysis because you guys know I don't have any certifications so this is very like regular person like how I feel about the show and my first impression was while I was watching like the first few episodes I started binging with my best friend because I was like it just popped up and I liked the trailer so I was like okay let's watch it while we were having a uh um while we were hanging out or whatever and like my first few episodes in I was just kind of like a white person wrote this script a white person wrote the script. That was my first impression. And I was right. I was right. And the reason I want to say that is... I'll actually get more into it when I go into, like, characters and dynamics and stuff like that. Yeah, so I also made, like, a little thing called cute things. And things, like, there was no other word. I just put question marks because I was just like, what? There will be spoilers. Nothing's going to be in order. These were just the way I, like... I just wrote characters and I wrote things I thought about them and then I did a different section for like dynamics and then another thing for like dialogue so the plot points I might go over some things or run back or track back to some things so that's a-okay okay y'all okay, but like something I thought was cute was how we got the back to story to how Georgia knew to go to Wellsbury which was her and Joe meeting as teenagers at a bus stop which I thought was really cute their whole dynamic was really cute the whole giving up the sunglasses like I was like this is really cute like and the flashback really made me feel like this was a setup for Georgia and Joe. And they didn't follow through on it. Like, don't get me wrong. Joe was very interested. Like, you can tell from episode one, even though she was, like, exploiting him. she was He was very interested. But they really didn't do nothing with it, especially now that she's engaged to the mayor or whatever. So, it was a cute setup for a cute couple. But at the same time, I kind of don't want them together, but I'll get more into that, okay? And some things that I thought was, like, about the show was how much they talked about sex. Like, these kids are 15, 16 years old. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, I'm 20, so I, I just stopped being a teenager. Sex was not that important in a teenager's life. Like, yes, there were kids my age having sex but it was not that big of a thing that everybody that was all everybody talked about 24 7 like obviously not 24 24 7 but like it was such a big thing that I was like it's really not that serious and like if you've been to a normal high school it's not that deep it's not but it just was doing a lot especially because these are like 15 years old a lot of this stuff could have been set in college you know and the plot would have kind of, for the most part, stayed the same. But y'all love looking at teenagers' function, but that's none of my business, okay? 
And then another thing that I was kind of just like was towards the end of the show, um, Georgia was stretching up stressing about college. Mind you, she's a sophomore. I wasn't stretching just yet. Junior year is when I started stressing. But she was stressing about college because all of her like classmates were like doing extracurriculars and all this stuff for their college applications. I promise y'all they really don't care about none of that. Like I don't feel like they remember jack crap about it but yeah that was something she was really stressing so what she did towards the end of it was there's a racist teacher that you know he was introduced as a racist from the get-go when she started going to the school like in like episode one or two or whatever and she she's blackmailing him for a recommendation she's like if you don't want me to go to a school board telling them how you keep singling me out about using the n-word because like he taught there was a the n-word was said in a book and he was like georgia's the only one offended because she was the only black girl in the class or black person period in the class so yeah she's basically like you give me a letter of recommendation or i'm gonna go to a school board and obviously he signed it because he didn't want to lose his job but i'm like why would i even want a recommendation from a racist like even though i wrote the recommendation myself he could easily go behind my back and sabotage me why not go to a different teacher like i know we haven't met any other teacher but this would have been a good time to establish a trusting adult within the school like <sighs> And I promise you, a regular black kid is not doing all that with a racist person. No, biracial or not. But, like, let's just get into, like, the characters. Because I don't think I like anyone. I don't think there was a single likable character in this show. Like, I liked you, but at the same time, I was just like, you're such an a-hole. Like, everyone was an a-hole at some point in time. I think the, my favorite character is Georgia, the mom. And even then, she would be doing stupid stuff. And I would be like, are you serious right now? Are you dumb? Like... But let's get into it. The first character we have is Ginny. Ginny is a biracial black girl. She was born in Virginia, hence the name. Her and her brother are both named after the city slash state they were born in. And her mom, Georgia, she developed that identity while she was in Georgia cute little me back with joey saw that her real name is mary georgia's real name is mary but we're not on her we're on we're on jenny okay and something i liked about jenny was that she, even though she was a biracial child that grew up with a white mo mother like was raised by her white mother she was still very aware that she was not white she was black and white like she wasn't like every other white kid that she grew up around especially because at one point they were living in texas and texas has a lot of very predominantly white areas and stuff like that and that seemed to be the area that they were in because they talked about racism that she faced in the south or whatever they never really delved too much into it but they touched on it a bit and then she moved up north even though northern states are viewed as the less racialized states no everywhere got racist okay even if they want to act like they don't and so they moved to wellsbury the show starts off with them um with georgia's husband dying and they move they move up to wellsbury virginia is it virginia maine somewhere up north okay in wellsbury which is a small town it's a very small town everyone knows everybody type of town and i just i don't know like her mother was very self-aware at times about like not letting people touch her daughter's hair and making jenny be adamant about not letting any and everybody touch her hair and her standing firmly in her blackness her mother was very like her mother taught her hey if somebody's being racist you need to stand up for yourself and you need to tell me so i can say something or whatever which i was just like okay good like you're making her aware of her blackness but at the same time they use that stupid freaking line i find it so dumb the I'm too black for the white kids, but I'm too white for the black kids. And it peed me off because it literally just made no sense. The reason I said that is because as soon as she got to the school, the white kids, obviously, you know, they could have either been drawn to her being a new kid or her being different from them, i.e. being biracial. But they wanted to hang out with her. They were including her. Obviously, there was one person in the group, Abby, who was just kind of like a little... I, like she was just like oh i don't want a new person in the friend group but it wasn't because she was black it was simply because they have solidified their trio and she didn't want a fourth person coming in and then so that's why i was like the white kids were being very upset accepting of her there was even an asian girl who i i feel like she's adopted 
I feel like they said she was adopted, I think, or maybe I'm imagining it. I don't know. And then like there was another biracial character, but instead of being black and white, they were black and Asian. And that was like her, one of her potential love interests in the show. And so, and along with that not making sense, that whole, oh, I'm too black for the white kids and I'm too white for the black kids was, there was even a black girl, a dark skinned black girl who came up, her name is Bracia, who came up and was literally like, hey, you're new, you know, we want to give you a space to be creative, a leader, she was like, I'm part of a leadership group, we would love it if you would come join us, this, that, and third. So, her, like, I understand why a biracial kid will feel like I'm too black or I'm too white, depending on what area they're in. But when she said it, it really didn't make sense to me because literally everyone was being so kind and so inviting to her. For the most part, obviously there were one or two stupid people because it's bound to happen in life. But like when she kept saying, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm not this enough. And I'm like, everyone's literally trying to be your friend right now. Everyone's literally trying to include you. Like no one's even squawking about your biracial. And it's like, like, I'm sorry. Like, yes, that is your identity. And yes, it's important. But no one was making you feel like that wasn't important. Like, no one was personally acting like she was just white or she was just black. They were acknowledging it. They even did it at the end of the, um, at, like, one of the last episodes. I think it was, like, episode 9 or 10. The black girl went on to, and told her because they were talking about the racist teacher again when he said the comment about the whole N-word in the book. And the black girl was like, yeah, you know, you're under, you, you, you understand he's going to single you out because obviously you're mixed with black and you know, you know, you're not viewed the same as a fully white person. But the black girl's even like, you have to acknowledge that you're, you're going to move through this school better than me simply because of your proximity to whiteness. And the girl never even thought of that. Jenny, who's so high and mighty and so self-aware, never even thought about how she moves better throughout the world than a fully black person well not the world let me say a white a predominantly white setting like she didn't even like think of that and I was just kind of like this statement that's what made me feel like this was written by like that solidified like I knew this was written by a white person I knew I knew when they said that comment I was like I know I know like there's no way her mother taught her to stand in both her high identities firmly for her to say this stupid thing Moving on, okay. <clears throat> um, also, she was categorized basically as like the responsible daughter. Her mom was very much like her. Her mom to me came off as a sister, like, like because her mom had her so young. Her mom had her at fifteen, so obviously she's still young herself. And even though she has a younger brother, she would be the one parenting the younger brother per se, in the sense of mom, you can't give him chili cheese fries for breakfast or simple stuff like that, or like she would be driving things like of that nature, stuff like that. And then, I don't know, I just feel like they kind of ruined her character a little bit for me, like, real quick. Like, I was like, dang, how do you ruin her that fast? Because her neighbor, she has a neighbor, she befriended um, their twins. Her neighbors are twins, a boy and a girl. The boy is her potential love interest. His name is Marcus, her second potential love interest, not the biracial Asian boy. And then his sister, Maxine. And, you know, he ends up sneaking th through her window after they had a couple of conversations, it's only been like a day or two and they literally have sex. And I'm like, was your entire character rization not about you being the level headed, take things slow, don't rush, don't do anything that you might regret the next day. And you just did the complete opposite. Like, I'm like, how do you ruin her foundation that quickly when you just established she was somebody who wasn't with the, just sleep with somebody. And I'm like, y'all had two conversations and they were not pleasant conversations for you to be so keen on sleeping with this boy. I was just like, there's no way. There's no way. I was just like, wow, that just happened. And then on top of that, like skipping around a bit because it was just, you know, a lot. I'm trying to like condense 10 episodes into like everything. There was a part that I really did like. Um, there was a carnival fundraiser held at the school and there was a beauty booth and all the girls got put their hair in, up into a high ponytail to resemble Ariana Grande. If you don't know what Ariana Grande ponytail looked like, here it is. And I was like, okay. And then it came up to be uh, Jenny's turn and she was last after everybody else. And obviously the stylist is a white woman because like I said, this is a predominantly white town. So majority of people are white here. The stylist did not know what to do with her hair. She was like brushing it from the roots instead of the edge and working her way up. And I'm like, and it ends up her hair, the stylist ends up like just giving up and leaving like half her head frizzy. 
and you know obviously her friends don't know how to react because all of them have like type one hair and so instead of like using this moment as a way to like segue into a honest conversation because a lot of this plot that revolves around Jenny herself is about her being biracial and I was like this could have been a moment for you to like start a dialogue with your friends especially because in the beginning her friends were acting so self-aware about not touching a black person's hair and doing all this and that but now they're just having you go to a booth with somebody who doesn't even know how to work with your hair as if it was nothing like they missed the ball like I, I like i'm glad they showed that people I'm like y'all should have started a dialogue y'all should have said i was like this would have been a good moment to actually build more on the friendship with these people because a lot of times when it came to friendship building it was just them just blurting out their secrets to one another and i'm like how are you blurting out all your secrets about your beef between your mother and everybody else to these girls that you barely known for a couple of months not even it's i feel like it's only been like a month or two and she was so quick to tell them her business that i was just kind of like but you can't explain your hair to them this would have been a good way to build like friendship solidarity but instead she goes to the back and her herself none of them even follow her to see if she's okay and none of that and i was just kind of like but yeah um she's also very much a follower they try to paint her as this like whole i'm independent leader type person but she's a follower she is she was quick to sleep with um her the biracial asian boy her and him end up going out or whatever for like a good chunk of season one and you know towards the end she's like she's going to sleep with him after her friend who maxine the twin girl who is gay by the way which i did a, like that was some good diversity in there maxine says she's ready to lose her virginity right Mind you, Jenny's already lost her virginity to Marcus, Maxine's twin, but no one knows because she hasn't told anyone. And so Maxine thinking they're both going to lose their virginity that night together, but homegirl don't even tell her, hey, I already lost mine. Like, you didn't even have to tell her that your brother took the virginity. You could have said somebody from back in my hometown or something. But yeah, so like, she was just so quick to do whatever they wanted. She was quick to exclude this. This There was this other girl who like wanted to be part of the group who was there longer than Jenny. And her name is Samantha. And Jenny was like so quick to ice her out once she picked up that the other girls didn't really want to hang with her. And she was so quick to be rude to her. But then towards the end of the show, she wanted the, the girl to tell her information about, hey, why are the girls mad at me? Because they had a falling out towards the end of the season. I'm like what like how are you being rude and nasty to somebody simply because other people are a follower no backbone because a girl like me i would be like like chill out that's rude like there's no need for none of that but a lot of high school kids are followers even if they don't want to admit it like they just want to fit in don't get bullied and that's that so <sighs> Okay, and then towards the end, they also had this whole competition in her English class where everyone was supposed to write a essay, read it out loud to the class, and the teacher would pick the person who had the best essay to send them into this, like, competition or something. And the, in the competition, if you win towards the end, like, going up against all the other schools, you would gain um, a college scholarship. And she really wanted the money to help set her up for a good foundation to go to school. She ends up going to her dad, by the way. Her mom and her dad are not together, but he ends up coming towards like mid end mid slash end of the season because Jenny asked him to because her and her mom kept butting heads so much and they kind of like balance each other out. And he ends up taking her to a poetry slam. So she made her essays like basically like a poetry and she basically talked about her not really fitting in anywhere but fitting in everywhere at the same time because of her ability to like you know adapt code switch all that stuff well she can't really code switch but so yeah and i liked her speech it was really cool i was like i'm like i'm glad you're acknowledging you being biracial along with you being able to move differently in the world than a fully black person like i was like that was really endearing like you kind of like hit the nail on the freaking head i like that obviously the teacher was like no it's controversial it's unconventional because one it wasn't written in essay format and two this is a black biracial girl trying to talk about her black her blackness um her dealing with blackness in a white community and they weren't going for that they weren't going for it and i was just kind of like I expected it. It was to be seen. She thought she was going to get it because the whole class loved it, but I'm like, 
your teacher's racist or where did you think it was gonna go but i digress um and then towards the end abby i really did not like her okay but she ends up breaking down to the girls and finally telling the group that her parents are getting a divorce and that she really needed them but a lot of them were like they were all flaking on her essentially and jenny ends up being like oh i know how you feel da, 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 da. and i'm like how are you making this situation about you it was giving victoria justice vibes we all sing and i'm like your parents were never married your mom left a lot when you were a kid so you were like missing years on years with your father like it's not the same and then that's when Abby gets upset. She's like, I can't believe you're making my situation where I'm breaking down about my family breaking up about you. And Jenny was like, oh, we all have stuff going on. I'm like, yes. And they listen to you every time. Every time you complain about your mother, they're listening to you. Every time you complain about Hunter, which is the biracial Asian boy, they're listening to you. Like, you literally, like, were the center of attention for, like, the past 10 episodes up until this last part. So I was just kind of like, and Abby ended up slapping her. And I was like, I feel like it's deserved, like, like, Abby's a horrible person, but they're all horrible persons. So I was just kind of like, who's going to out horrible to each other today? And I guess Jenny decided she wanted to be the most horrible today. So I was like, I feel like that slap was deserved. If I, if I was Abby, because they end up doing this whole everybody slapping themselves or whatever. Except, uh, what's that girl name? The Asian character, Nora. But I was just kind of like, I'm not slapping myself. You deserve that slap. Because why are you making my situation about you anyways last one i have for her um towards like um the end of the show like how i said her father came back she ends up talking to her father and was like i don't want you to sleep with mom like i don't want you guys to have sex because every time you have sex you got you end up leaving because mom starts acting weird and she was like i just want you to keep it strictly platonic like because i want you to hear for like the long run this time because jenny was really like having a hard time like getting along with her mother ends up falling and they end up sleeping together because um georgia's boyfriend the mayor we'll get to him was like saying she can't come to an event because of stuff like that and so they end up sleeping together and she ends up catching them in bed together she ends up being like upset mind you trigger warning self-harm she does self-harm she uses fire to burn her thighs and so she's doing that and while she's doing it again marcus the neighbor climbs into her window catches her and because she's so upset at her parents or whatever she lashes out at marcus and i was just befuddled i was like you can't be serious like this man is trying to like first he came over to tell you i love you first of all second of all he did tell her i love you and then second of all he's trying to make sure you're good and you're like calling him worthless garbage da -da this da -da that and i'm just like literally in my notes it's question mark question mark question mark marcus is crap but my like i don't really care for marcus but i'm like my goodness question mark question mark question mark what is wrong with you like what is this speech jesus christ question mark question mark question mark calling him worthless question mark question like like this was the man that was like like even though her friends would like listen to her problems they wouldn't really listen but marcus would genuinely like listen and tell her like it's okay to be upset while everybody else was like well maybe it's not this way or maybe you're overreact like but this was the one person who was letting her know you can be mad be mad be pissed at the world like this was the one person who was letting her be freely pissed off and i'm like you turn around and do that like i don't really care for him but geez louise he did not deserve that i don't know we gonna move on because i could be on Gina, jenny all day she's just not a likable character and i really wanted to like her because i'm like oh a black lead a black biracial lead we get you somewhere netflix but no she was just garbage like there's no better way to put it anyway we're gonna move on to georgia okay georgia got pregnant at 15 with virginia with her with virginia's father zion i really like zion um she ended up meeting zion while she was on the road they both ran away from home met at a bar they were both underage she was 15 he was 17 i believe um they ended up going around the state or country or whatever just riding around taking pictures enjoying themselves the whole time zion just kind of like minding his business for the most part just kind of like traveling with her they might they did like petty theft stealing like gum and some stuff but she was like robbing stores 
at gunpoint when he would walk out the store to go start up the motorcycle she was robbing these folks at gunpoint and he had no clue and i'm like you are a beautiful man but you are an airhead you're an airhead um so yeah um she also has a second child named austin austin and jenny do not have the same father austin's father his name is like i don't know he's not really important to me but he is in prison for a fraud um georgia jokes about framing him but i'm like i really do think she framed him they haven't confirmed it but i think she did it um let's see what else did i write about her she was abused by her stepfather so um georgia grew up in a home like she had her mother who was on crack her whole life no meth her whole life she has a half sister who comes into the show a little bit later and then she had her stepfather who would molest her as a child and which uh which is why she ended up running away from home which is how she was on which is how jenny came to be all of that stuff and yeah so um she's kind of like to me the ultimate american white woman because I, i've only had experience with american white women and when i say that what i mean is like she's somebody she's a white woman who is very in touch with her femininity and isn't afraid to use it for manipulation and as a weapon which is what a lot of white women do not even on purpose but it's kind of like just what they're taught to do like use your femininity to your benefit because if everybody sees you at a damsel in a stress might as well use it to your benefit to get farther in life and she uses it well like she's a beautiful lady she uses it well um and she kind of uses it like everybody thinks she's dumb and stuff like that so she uses it to her advantage to be sneaky around people and i was just kind of like yeah and i really liked her casting her younger self because like, they do a lot of flashbacks with georgia and jenny when Jen, when georgia was still a child okay and i was like oh this is cool um they kind of alluded to um georgia killing her late husband who is not the father to either georgia or jenny this was just a um, random man she ended up marrying later on and you kind of seen a flashback the at late husband was touching on jenny like she was like he owns a yoga studio multiple ones and so they were at home trying to do yoga poses and georgia ends up walking away to go i think get herself ready because they were going out or something and he's like teaching jenny a pose and he starts like rubbing on her and jenny keeps saying stop and he's like feeling on her and georgia peeps this and i'm like oh yeah he's dead she definitely killed him like as soon as i saw that flashback i was like she killed that man in honor of her daughter like at that point we weren't really too like aware of her molestation with her father like with her we weren't aware that georgia had been like abused abused as a child like, we didn't know she was molested but like we knew that you know she was having problems at home so i guess she was like my daughter's not going through none of that boom and also come to find out she was before this husband she was also married to a different man who owned the hotel that she was working at and she was married him because she got busted her sister maddie and we're gonna get to her busted her for having an illegal gambling ring at the ripe age of like i want to say 16 because georgia no 17 because georgia right now is about like one years old okay so she's about like 17 herself and so she marries this man in order to keep custody of georgia because they were like the courts were like you need a stable home like we need to know that you can take care of your daughter and this man owns like this bed and breakfast hotel it's really skeevy really nasty he's a pedophile he's like infatuated with her wants wanted her before this whole scheme came about and he was just like he didn't want her to leave the house like at all like he would not want a hotel he would not want her to leave because in like in his mind i'm assuming he's just assuming like once she's out that door with her kid she's not coming back because she has her kid they're legally binded and legally he's like giving her support so she ends up making him overdose or whatever but she never like really called the ambulance to be like hey my sorry y'all we got cut off but like yeah she ends up um drugging her first husband to the point that he like dies she doesn't call the ambulance and like i feel like georgia's really smart but at times she can be really dumb because honestly once he overdosed i would have called the like um 
the police the ambulance the police and being like i came home with my daughter and my husband i think he must have gotten into our pills and like tried to commit suicide for whatever reason and you know you can talk about him like you know basically they touched on like his father owned the hotel but he didn't want to be like it like living there so he like moved to like florida or something like you could have talked about him being depressed by his father not being there and i'm like you're not smart because and essentially the her late husband he was married to somebody else before and the lady ends up contesting the will because in the will he left everything to jenny and austin two people who are not his children and nothing to his actual child that he had with his first wife so she ends up also hiring a private investigator to go find out georgia's secret like did he die the way he died is the will actually something he came up with or did she like forge this will and this pi is also how we're introduced to her sister maddie but i'm not just there yet okay and i would also like to say for georgia's character she was a very self-aware white woman but at the same time not aware like i'm like it was just i'll get into it when we get to the dynamics of it but yeah then we have Austin, Austin, which is the younger brother of Jenny, Georgia's second child. And I don't really find him interesting as an actual character, but I find his dynamic with Georgia very interesting. I feel like she is a representation of Georgia before we met. I got really cut off. But I was saying, I feel like Austin is a representation of Georgia before we see her in her flashback. So before she had Jenny and before she, you know came like into meeting zion and running away and stuff like that the reason i say that is because austin is very shy and very timid which i feel like that was jenny before we met her because you know the whole molestation thing was going on we did see in a flashback she did end up going back to her mother and stepfather's house where she did shoot him in his hands for saying like basically as a warning to stop touching little girls so yeah, I feel like Austin is her because he has the same angry tendencies as her. Like he's very impulsive in the sense of like harming people. Like we already know George was a killer. Even if they didn't confirm it, Burbit, they basically confirmed it at the end with the late husband and the first husband. We know she's a killer and we, and we see Austin has very angry tendencies. So I feel like he's her before she learned to actively focus her anger and aggression. And I feel like Georgia is some... It, no. I feel like Jenny is who Georgia wished she was at that age. Very outspoken, very not afraid to tell her mother or whoever how it is, how she's feeling and things like that. Which is why, you know, I felt like it was so out of character from what they were trying to portray to us about Jenny for her to be so deceitful to everyone. Just lying and sleeping with Marcus while she's still with hunter like it just like it didn't like it wasn't making sense to me because you set her up as this like character who's very outspoken very true and very honest to somebody that's just no i don't care i'm sleeping with whoever and like yeah i want to tell you but i'm not going to tell you because it's going to inconvenience me at the end of the day when everyone gets upset like yeah so yeah um austin's a very shy kid but he's very aggressive and very impulsive once you push him to that point but like he still wasn't very that he wasn't really interesting to me i just kind of like seeing him in georgia's dynamics and how georgia had him deal with his own beliefs but all i'm gonna say is austin ended up stabbing a kid in the hand and if you ask me if you out here bullying people you kind of deserve it because mind yours and this kid still had the gossip to, to to like be rude and austin went to go apologize to him if it was me i ain't apologizing to nobody i did what i did went there sharper than pencil and stab 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 because why you keep bullying me i don't know you from nowhere but yeah austin dealt with how our kids should deal with bullies but that's my personal opinion my personal opinion like sorry for the quickie chair you know you girl got a spinach on now i have to stop and move in okay let's move on the next person i have under austin for characters is ellen the girl from twitches and all i'm gonna say is because we didn't really see much of her but she seems like a very genuine person like don't get me wrong first episode when she just barged into the house to welcome um georgia i was kind of like why are you just walking to a stranger's home like that like she doesn't have boundaries in that sense 
but i feel like overall she's cool and she just deserves better kids both of her kids the twins they are such garbage people like they just bring nothing to the table i'm like this wonderful woman and her wonderful husband which i also like that they did the family ellen's husband is also deaf so they had a lot of signing so anytime a scene took place at the home and the father was present they made sure to sign which i really appreciated like that was real cool and they would also sign what other people were saying to the husband so he could also communicate. And they didn't make it like this weird thing like, oh my God, he's deaf. It was just like a normal family. And I was like, this is good representation. Just act like everyone's normal because everyone is literally normal. Even if it's not your normal, it's somebody else's normal. So treat it as such. So I really appreciated that. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to have my friend. Her mother is hard of hearing. I'm going to have my friend like look back on those scenes. I'm going to be like, are these accurate? Because, you know, sometimes they be, they be faking the funk. But I feel like, you know, hopefully they did it right. Like, you already on a good track, so keep it going. The next person I have on my list is Joe. Joe owns the rest, like, it's a restaurant, brew, cafe type thing. And I really like Joe because they showed that Joe is a businessman. Like, he doing what he had to do. This white, this white man. Woo, no. Joe, I think he seems to be Indian to me, but they never really specify from what I from what I remember um but it, it it took me a while to finish the show because I had to like take a break because it was so like sometimes but yeah as far as I can tell he's a he's a person of color okay and I really like that he was exploiting these white college kids because he was basically like you work at my restaurant slash farm because he had a farm also in town where he would grow his produce and his um stuff that he would like use in the cafe and he was like you work here for me for free and I'll give you college credit. And I'm like, and obviously it's a little unethical, but I'm like, I can't blame you. All these people are wealthy. Like maybe keep some wealth for yourself. Get some free labor. I'm not mad. Um, but I kind of was a little iffy on Joe. Not Joe himself, but Joe's role in the show. Because it was very quickly seen after we found out that he was using free labor from these college kids. Georgia used that as a way to explain him basically being like, I'll get like the health and bureau people in here real quick if you don't, you know, provide free lunch to the school. And like, it just gave me like... It's mainly a trope seen with black women. They're called mammies, basically a character that serves the white intact uh, protagonist like whether it's looking after their children like she, it was giving me bonnie from the vampire diaries like a magical negro like she was just doing everything they're doing all their dirty work dying constantly like joe's not getting hurt like physically but like emotionally he really did have feelings for georgia and georgia either is oblivious af which is very unlikely being the person that she is just didn't seem to understand that joe kind of had a crush on her and then, like, he was, like, one of the main people of color cast, like, uh, at, like a real caring character. And anytime he was being introduced or being shown, it was either him consoling Georgia, consoling Jenny, doing Jenny's bidding when it came to, like, helping the mayor. And it just kind of gave me, like, mammy vibes, but, like, not really, like, like, his own, like, he didn't have a life outside of this little bubble of serving Georgia and her child, like, even got Jenny a job like Georgia even forced him to give Jenny a job without a formal interview or anything and I was just kind of like it's giving I serve by my white protagonist and I don't have no other story outside of that which I feel like it's just but Joe himself is a decent character I don't mind him he seems very sweet very nice and he deserves better than Georgia like I feel like that would have been a cute couple if she wasn't a killer she's a killer she seems to kill all the men she's been with, but usually they're kind of crappy men anyways. But, yeah, I don't think she's ever killed somebody who wasn't crappy as far as I can tell. So, I, I still wouldn't want Joe around that. I kind of want him to find somebody better. Like, Joe just cool, but not worthy of Joe. Joe just kind of, like, in his own lane. Like, you're chilling. You don't need that drama in your life, especially not with her kid. You don't want, you don't need that drama. You don't deserve that. You deserve better than that drama. So, like, yeah, that's Joe to me. But, yeah, they would have been a cute couple if maybe Georgia would have stuck it out and went to Wellsbury with Joe, but then Jenny wouldn't have existed. It would have been a whole different timeline. I hope they, I hope they kind of, like, touch into that. Like, what would happen if uh, Georgia got on that bus with Joe when they met as teenagers instead of leaving with the biker crew? I wonder what would happen. 
Okay, then we have Mayor Pa. Mayor Pa is Georgia's love interest outside of Zion, her, the father of her child, Jenny's dad. And Mayor Pa is very boring to me. He became slightly, slightly, like, slightly more interesting when um at the end of the episode when georgia was trying to break up with him because she wanted to try again with zion and he was kind of just like no i don't want you to break up with me like boom wedding ring like and like and he basically was just like georgia i can tell you're somebody that craves power da, da, da. And i'm like okay i kind of like that you notice that she's somebody who likes to have control of stuff but at the same time I'm like you just said you bought that ring after your first date that's a red flag for me maybe because i'm like there's no way you after a first date you already bought a ring it just made him a little creepy but it did make him more interesting because to me he had an eye on like mayor paul was very boring to me he's still like he's still not giving what it's supposed to give like he's just oh he's just very bland like there's nothing much to say about him i don't really care for him like so we're gonna move on then we have marcus which is a twin the boy from across the street and like marcus wasn't a bad person like i could tell he genuinely liked jenny but he was so worried about keeping this like image of being so like chillaxed and i don't care about anything that it was just kind of like you like the girl you like the girl you're doing too much with this whole i like you but i don't like you and then comes to find out he was like doing jenny dirty after they had sex or whatever for the first time my Jenny lost her virginity to him that first time. Come to find out he lost his to hers too, but he was kind of acting like he was big man on campus. And I'm like, <sighs> like Marcus isn't a bad person. They tried to paint him as a bad person in comparison to Hunter, Jenny's other love interest. And I was just kind of like, it's not doing anything. I'm like, he's not really doing anything wrong. Like he was just minding his, like, don't get me wrong. He was wrong for always coming into Jenny's room and trying to have sex and then leave. But, like, I could see why he was attached to her because, like, they were each other's first time, which makes sense why they're attached, okay? Everybody doesn't get attached after their first time, but some people do. So, like, I was like, okay, I could understand why he was, like, so adamant about, like, sleeping with her again or, like, being around her, like, because at first I was not understanding, like, if you're a player, why are you so, like, infatuated with this one girl, but this one girl is the girl he lost his virginity to? So, like, yeah, they tried to make him, like, look like the bad person, but I was just kind of like, he's not a bad person. He does bad things and he's kind of boring, but he's not bad. And I kind of like how he was Jenny's like vulnerability space. Like she could say anything and she could be pissed off and he wouldn't judge her for being pissed off. So I kind of enjoyed that aspect of the relationship. But overall, it's not really giving me nothing. Maybe because she was with Hunter majority of season one that hopefully when they do, when they get to season two, they kind of, you know, develop their relationship a little more. I just feel like, there could have been more to it, but people on TikTok are swooning over this couple, and I'm like, they weren't a real couple. But I digress. Next, after that, we have Maxine, which is Marcus's twin sister and Jenny's supposed best friend for majority of season one. Maxine seemed like a genuine person. She really did seem like a genuine person. She was annoying to me. Sometimes I just wanted her to shut up. Like, like you talk too much. Like, she physically was always talking about something even though it had no importance and i was just like do you ever shut your pie hole like do you ever shut your pie hole but um she's also the character that was um she was one of two gay characters on the show she was lesbian and then the mayor's assistant frank no is his name i don't forgot his name but he's he's gay but he wasn't really like a focus or nothing like that like we got to see his relationship and it was treated as normal as it should everything was treated as normal and yeah she was pretty much accepted by her family she had a lot of trouble like talking to girls or whatever which i feel like maybe for like a gay kid growing up is gonna be normal you have to navigate a world a sh default straight world like that's what everybody like you're expecting you're like you don't know if somebody's gay until they verbally tell you so like she was like having crushes on a straight girl who she didn't know end up confessing her feelings didn't go nowhere and then she ends up finding a senior who actually likes her and it was really cute like it was nice senior ends up leaving her and i'm like yeah baby you're a sophomore that's a senior where did you think it was gonna go like but yeah she was annoying uh she seemed genuinely nice but i kind of like yeah she was like the least garbage out of the friend group but she was still garbage in my opinion and you know i could understand why she was hurt when she found out that her brother and jenny were sleeping together because mind you 
Jenny's all in her face about all this stuff and never once told her about Marcus. Not once. Like, I felt like you should have told her since y'all was being so open about everything else. Like, she was, Jenny was open about a mom, her mom having a gun to her back, her mom sleeping with her dad while she's with, while she's still technically dating the mayor. Like, she was just telling their business all the time. So, why she didn't tell about Marcus, I will never understand because you were telling these girls everything else except for maybe like her harming herself but everything else she was like openly telling her business so i was just kind of like why is this the one thing you were like no i can't tell you when you were literally spilling everything else so i kind of understand why um maxine would kind of been hurt also like they're twins they probably had to like share everything growing up you don't want to also share friends like you want to you know your own space to be your own person where everybody doesn't think of marcus and maxine you want to be marcus space maxine so i can understand how she was annoyed like i completely understand her feelings but she kind of like rubbed me the wrong way towards the end she ended up telling hunter jenny's boyfriend at the time the biracial asian boy that jenny cheated on her with marcus and i was like this just solidified you as a horrible character like maybe because me as like morally i would never do that to somebody like even if i'm mad at you i'm not gonna tell your secrets because it's going to detriment your life especially when you've been talking to me about your life this entire time like your dad just left you your mother's acting crazy she just got engaged like there's all this stuff going on like i wouldn't add to the drum like i wouldn't want to be your friend I wouldn't want to be around you. I wouldn't even want nothing to do with you after lying to me for months. But I wouldn't dish your business out like that. So, I was just like. I just, I couldn't. When she did that, I was just like, I understand you're hurt. But that was so garbage. But Jenny should have told them from a jump. Like, but whatever. Then moving on to Nora. Nora was the Asian girl of the group. I feel like she was adopted, but I don't know. Like I could have sworn she said she was adopted because she calls her mother by her first name. So I don't, I don't know if that's just a thing that they're doing because I seen Jenny start doing it. So I'm like, is it just a thing y'all y'all are doing, or you just seen her doing it? So you're now you're coughing and you don't know that she's adopted. I don't know, but I kind of like um like Nora. No, I did not like her. I lied. But um, I kind of like how she was like one of the few out of, outside of Jenny. She was like the only other like person of color that was a girl that was like reoccurring consistently in the show. And I don't, I don't know. Like I liked how they didn't play into the model minority myth with her because she was very much. I'm more into boys. Like I care about school and I get my work done because she was in AP classes, but she had a life outside of that. Like that wasn't her whole arc or whatever she wasn't like the good asian girl that did like no no she was like a normal teenager she drank she cursed she did everything else she had a boyfriend that she would like you know have sex with like she didn't fit the model minority myth which i appreciated because hunter the biracial agent can on the other side he literally like was like the mold for the model minority like quiet boyfriend who did whatever the girlfriend asked him to like when jenny asked him to skip school to take her home um good grades love his parents no back talking nothing like it was like two sides of one coin like the model minority myth of like how asian people are viewed and then like no they're regular freaking people here's Nora, like a regular freaking person like yeah she's asian and she's smart but that's not her only personality which i appreciated but she was kind of very i kind of wish i moved away from the stereotype because they were doing it with everybody else having a self-aware white mom a self-aware biracial girl who like whatever like, they moved from the usual stereotypical stuff, but the only thing I didn't like about Nora's character, she still had that very meek stereotype of Asian women being quiet and not outspoken. Like, when all her friends would give her opinion, Nora would kind of just, like, side with whoever, would always be like, I'm Switzerland, I'm not siding with anybody, or no, it's not my fault. Like, like you know, like, she never really had her own opinion. It was kind of like, she was, like, there, but she was never, like, a strong personality in the group, which I kind of feel like they should have dived away from a little bit, because that's a normal characteristic not characteristic it's a normal stereotype that they use on asian women very meek very quiet very submissive like doesn't have an op her own opinion especially in white spaces i feel like if you're subvert submer subverging from all these other stereotypical stuff you could have did that with her like made her a little bit more i'm going to stay my ground instead of i'm switzerland i'm not in it da, da, da. like you know what i'm saying but since i cannot blame her because realistically if you're a person of color in a majority white space your goal is to one not be standing out because you don't want to be bullied and to just navigate the easiest way you can and maybe that's the way she was coping so you know i can't really judge her on that so 
although I'm, I would have liked to see them move from the expectation, I can't really be like upset because realistically, a lot of POC kids would have been like minding their business. Like, they're like, I'm Switzerland. I'm not in this. This is y'all white people business. I'm just here chilling. Okay. So like, I can't be upset because it's realistic, but I kind of don't want reality. Everything else was unrealistic. So, yeah. Then we had Abby. Abby was kind of, she was the redhead. She was very annoying. There's no other, she was a B-I-T-C-H. Like, that's just what it was. Like, she, from jump, she was like, I don't want Jenny in the group. Like, we have our solidified trio. There doesn't need to be anybody else in it. And I don't blame her. Like, who wants a new person in their friend group? Like, don't get me wrong. We can always add friends, but not, like, friends in the friend group. You know what I'm saying? So, I can understand why she was upset, but she was just rude. Like, and then there was an episode where they stole from, like, um, from... A boutique or something and she blamed it all on jenny when jenny's when georgia came to pick up jenny and georgia was like why is my daughter the only one checked because her daughter was not the only one that stole the lady was like oh no but i saw your daughter but the lady was like if they're together you should assume we're all stealing so you should have everybody empty their pockets but she didn't or whatever and the girl was quick to blame jenny on all of it on jenny like the idea with jenny's and it wasn't and i was just kind of like after that incident i would have caught all of them off because why are you quick to blame me like Like, Nora was just a B-I-C-C-H. There was nothing to it. But I really liked her character arc of Trigger Warning Body Dysmorphia. So, basically, she kind of, like, had this thing where she wanted thigh gaps. So, she would literally, like, get tape and tape it around her leg. We only saw her deal with it for, like, an episode, which I kind of felt like was a... Like, that's the thing about this show. There's so many characters and so many plot points that they want to touch on. You kind of never really completely finish anything. So, hopefully, they get back into it in Season 2 with her dealing with it. Maybe not people finding out right away, but maybe, like, you know, her struggling with it because it was, like, the one thing she could control, like, her parents divorcing and all this stuff going on, a new friend group, like, a new person in the friend group. I, her, like, her thighs, her taping her thighs was, like, one of the only things that like, she could physically control. So, like, I'm, like, I understand why she did it or whatever, but I feel like they didn't really touch on it much. Um, yeah, and they didn't really touch on Jenny's self-harming either. It's kind of, like, they would show you it then you would know it's wrong, but they would never have any actual real conversations. But no one knows about Abby's taping of her thighs yet. So maybe in season two, somebody finds out, we maybe get her help. Maybe her and Jenny, maybe that could be like a way for them to rebuild their friendship, even though they weren't really friends in my opinion. Maybe that's a way for them to build a genuine friendship of both of them like harming themselves, but in different ways and for different reasons. And they don't feel comfortable going to an adult yet. So they go to each other, you know, to like kind of stop. Like that's a good way to like get a conversation going. But like there were some good things they would like start to talk about or they would start to show. But they would never finish out the thought. Like I would be like, okay, you set this up, but you did nothing with it. After the, it's like in the next episode, we forgot it happened. Like, but yeah, I don't really, I don't really like Abby. And then Abby also snitched, I think, or something like that. I think, I think she was the one that snitched to Hunter and Nora and then Maxine said something else. They're both snitches. I don't really care at this point. But yeah, I didn't really like Abby at the end, especially because she knew about Jenny and Marcus, the twin. Because when they were at Maxine's house, Jenny went into Marcus's room after he got in an accident to apologize. And they were like hugged up on each other. And Abby saw and Abby was like, don't tell her because she just got broken up with. She was like, don't tell Maxine because Maxine just got her heart broken and she doesn't need this betrayal on top of it. And then when Maxine told, like, Abby and Nora, Abby tried to act like this was like, oh, I didn't even know this was going on. Like, you're fake. You're fake. But that's neither here nor there. I don't really like her. They were all sucky friends, if we're being honest. <laughs> then we have Maddie. Maddie is... Georgia's sister, her younger half sister, come to find out when Georgia left the household, Maddie also started getting abused. Oh, fun fact: Georgia's real name is Mary, not Georgia. She changed it after she met Joe when they were teens or whatever. But yeah, so um, what was I saying? Oh, Maddie is Georgia's half sister who began getting molested after Georgia left the household and like ran away or whatever and Maddie at one point while Georgia was living in that hotel and working there 
motel hotel it's really run down so i'm gonna say motel while she was working there maddie ended up finding her lived with her for a while but maddie was kind of very harmful when it came to jenny like she would leave like one-year-old jenny filled in the bath like left in a bathtub full of water as if this was like a child who was not who could drown and like she ended up i think she was the one who ended up calling the police on georgia and telling them about the illegal gambling ring and i'm also believe she stole money from georgia while georgia was in the restroom taking care of jenny who she had left in the tub like and like i understand maddie's whole like dependency on georgia like this was the only non garbage person in her life at the time the only person who was taking care of her and before she left she was the reason that this girl was not getting molested and when she left it was like there was nobody else to touch but his own daughter so that's what maddie's father did to her but like i really didn't like maddie because once she only showed up in the show like in george's life after 10 years of not speaking to them because a pi was going to give her money five grand to find out dirt on georgia about whether the will was real did she do something to the husband to make him die but when georgia found out she doubled what the pi was going to give maddie instead of giving him giving her five grand she gave her 10 grand and like what you call it georgia was genuinely hurt because she genuinely thought her sister came back to reconcile after everything that happened even though her sister did her dirt the first time that like, you stole money from this girl who has to take care of a little child and like i understand maddie's anger and frustration but at the same time she put so much responsibility on a 15 year old 15 year old georgia that it didn't make sense to me because maddie kept saying oh i was a child i was a child i was like so was georgia you guys were only like a year and a half apart or something like that like Georgia was not that much older than you. She was a child who also had a child. So for you to put so much flack on her for not being there to stop a grown man from touching you was like, it blew my mind how self-centered everyone was. Like to be mad at a child that they ask you, they, that they told you they can't take care of you because they physically do not have the money or the funds. And you're literally irresponsible because you're eating all the food. You not taking care of the baby while the home girl that work and you're not working yourself. Like, I understand feeling abandoned by Georgia, but for Maddie to blame Georgia for everything that happened to her was a ludicrous to me. I feel like once the PI came to Maddie, it should have easily been Maddie coming to Georgia and be like, hey, somebody's coming to me. They're offering me money to spy on you. And you could have got your money that way because I'm pretty sure Georgia would have paid it off like how she paid it off anyways. But this time y'all could have actually been friends. You know what I'm saying? So like, I don't know, like Maddie was just... I really was kind of rooting for them because I was like, oh, this is a genuine friendship that, that has nothing to do with relationships, no nothing. This is somebody who's like family who you're going to reconcile with. And y'all have similar upbringings, meth head mom being molested as children. Like y'all could have been each other's anchors, but Maddie, Maddie just decided she was going to hate Georgia continuously because a child could not save her from a situation. Like it just, it's whatever um and then we have zion he is a real sweetheart um i don't have no complaints that like no i did up until episode eight i didn't have any complaints about him zion like i told you guys that is um jenny's father he even though austin's not his kid he's very sweet with austin he takes care of austin like he genuinely loves georgia but georgia seems to be the one that's kind of constantly running away because i think georgia's aware of the the harm that she can cause to men and that she doesn't want zion to ever ruin like the good thing that they have so she kind of just like let me push you away before you ruin the image i have of you and i feel like i have to hurt you in order to protect me and my children which i don't think zion i don't think zion would ever like really do anything like i don't he's never shown any of those tendencies so far but yeah he kind of disappointed me after what the heck y'all i'm gonna look lost But yeah, he kind of disappointed me. Like, after he, like, realized that Georgia was still kind of, like, having that thing with the mayor, even though she said she was going to break up with him, Zion took that as his cue to, like, she wants this kind of life. And he was like, I, this is not the life I kind of want. Like, I want us to move into an apartment out of the city. And, you know, he took the liberty to, like, tell um, Georgia that, hey, we just not going, we just going to leave it where it's at. Like, we had sex. We did what we did. We have our kids together. I care for Austin, but we're just not going to be together because obviously, you know, you want this life here and I don't. And like, I appreciate that about Zion. Like, he could put his, like, even though he had real feelings for this girl, he could see that she wasn't ready to let go of all this extra stuff. She wasn't ready to, like, take them serious. But, like, what I didn't like is, like, you promised Jenny you would stay. 
and you left like even if you were gonna be close like in like closer or whatever you still left like this man is successful like, he's a photographer and he has like a book deal coming up and i was like you could have easily bought a small condo in, in the city even if you're not living like i can understand not wanting to live in the house if you're not together but like to leave completely and be like oh but i'm still gonna be close it's kind of like in my head i was just like yeah, you kind of let me down at that point because I thought you were still going to stay. Even if it wasn't in the house, I felt like you should have still stayed in town. So that's my only complaint about Zion. He was too easy to leave. Like, I like you better than the mayor, okay? But at the same time, I kind of don't want him to be dragged into that whole Georgia mess of her being a killer, the whole P.I. thing. Like, I didn't kind of, I didn't want him to be in it, but, like, I still, like, enjoyed their relationship, like. And then we have Cynthia... Cynthia is a mom in Wellsbury who has a son the same age as Austin. Um, their sons are in class together. She kind of befriended Georgia at first. Kind of Georgia was kind of like helping her with like getting money for the school. But then Cynthia decided she wanted to. Um, Cynthia kind of like stopped feeling Georgia because one. Georgia, Cynthia's kids bullying Austin. So, um. Georgia literally had Austin punch him in his face and be like, you need to stop messing with my son. And so kids start keep, kept messing with Austin. Obviously, Austin stabbed the kid. And come to find out, Cynthia ends up running for mayor because she feels like she wants to do more for the kids. Like, I mean, you want to put all these money into the school, but your child is going to leave the school eventually. Like, all this money is not going to him. Like, And basically, she, like, knows that Georgia was embezzling money because Georgia's wearing, working at the mayor's office at this point. And she sees that Georgia, like, was embezzling money. But Georgia made sure to put it all back or whatever and couldn't, like, she couldn't really prove it because it was like, there's nothing missing. Um, but, yeah, so Cynthia, she was just annoying. Like, she's a very much a helicopter mom. She was all in Georgia's business and stuff like that. Oh, before I forget, Mayor Paul, when he saw those credit cards in Austin's name, and he was so quick to be so judgeful, get HR involved. I'm like, mind your business. This could have been a mother building her child's credit up for when he becomes an adult. Like, you don't know how, like, somebody, some parents literally do that. Like, they'll get, like, a cable bill or they'll get, like, a random credit card in their kid's name and they'll, like, pay the gas bill or the cable bill on it and then pay it off quickly. And it builds their kid's credit score. So, like, by the time your kid's 18, they don't have, like, 10 years of credit score, even though they didn't, they never really did anything themselves. So, like, for him to be so quick to go to HR about her business, I was kind of just like, you're weird. That was not for you to, like, be touching. Like, mm-mm. Okay, so that's the inner characters. Like, those are the main characters I wanted to touch on because they kind of had, like, either a reoccurring role or they did something significant in the show, um, in my opinion. Okay, and then there was... Now we're going to move on to... To the topic of dialogue. Wow, this video is going to be long. But that's okay. The dialogue was very cringy. That's that's the most I can say. Um, it's one thing for me to see like uh non-black people use AAVE like in text messages because they kind of see how everybody else is messaging like what well, is how black people are messaging and they kind of pick up on it and use it to text each other. But when they try and say the words out loud, it seemed very it seemed very forced because, like, these are all kids in a white suburban town. Like, a very small, white, rural suburban town trying to use words that no one in that area is, like, would naturally use. So, it seemed very forced. And I was just kind of like, is this what they do? Like, it was just very disingenuous. Like, I was just kind of like, this doesn't, I don't feel like this is how they would talk. Like, even if you type like this online, everybody doesn't text how they talk. Like, I was just kind of like, it just seemed forced. It just seemed very forced. I was just like, oh, I don't like that. Mm -mm. And also, maybe because I'm not a white person, I don't know how white people interact with one another, but the way they were just so willingly going into each other's houses without knocking, the way they were just telling their business left and right, I'm just like, unless it's a business that's harming someone, why are you telling these people your business? Especially these are people you, like, don't know like that. These are, these are, like, people that you just met. Like, 
Ellen, like, even though I feel like she was a good person in that first episode when she was like divulging about how her son was like a delinquent and she was just telling Georgia all this stuff, I'm like, you don't know this woman from nowhere. Like, this could be your son's future teacher. Like, you don't know what role she had in the town yet. But they were just like telling their business, especially Jenny blabber freaking mouth i'm like good grief do you have no boundaries they had no boundaries and maybe it's just how white people um interact with each other they're just very comfortable and relaxed and don't mind telling their business to one another but it was just very foreign to me i was just like like there was like no boundaries and i was just like y'all got it because i'm just like is this real? I don't know if it's realistic because I didn't grow up in a rural white suburban town. So is this how everybody acts? Is everybody know everybody? This is how you just do it? Because it was really like bizarre to me, but whatever. Um, I love the southern accents. That was one thing about the dialogue I freaking love. Georgia's accent, her sister's accents were just beautiful to me. I loved it. And I like how Georgia didn't, not Georgia, Jenny didn't have an accent because they did grow up in Virginia and they kind of moved around a lot before they settled in Texas and had Austin. So like, I'm glad she didn't have a southern accent because it was more realistic. Like a kid's not going to develop an accent if you're constantly moving from area to area where everybody just has an, a different type of accent. But Georgia's accent and her like, her phrases that she would use when she was like, what the heck? Or like, you know, whatever southern phrase she would use, I'd be like, that's so like, it's so nice. I don't know. That was just like a cute little addition that I really like. Because they could just make her a regular girl with no accent, no nothing. But apparently, I was on Instagram going through people, some of the cast's Instagram. Apparently, Austin is Australian. And I'm like, this little kid's accent, American accent, is good. But maybe that's why he don't talk a lot. Because they're trying to perfect that accent a little more. But yeah. Um, Last thing. I kind of like what I really did like about the dialogue when it came to like the teenagers was that it was very awkward which is like when it came to people interacting with people like the opposite sex or like the sex that they had an interest in it was very awkward they didn't know how to always say the right thing and I was like I kind of like I really like this because that's how it is in real life you never really like know what to say unless you like practice in the mirror and even when you practice the person doesn't always want to say what you're expecting them to say so I kind of like the awkward dialogue the kids had and like small miscommunications here and there because I'm like that's literally teenagers like that's literally how it is sometimes so I appreciated the awkwardness between the between the kids because I'm like that's literally how it is like even when you're friends with somebody sometimes it can be a little awkward Especially being a new kid, you know what I'm saying? But it was real cool. So I kind of, I enjoyed that part. I like the awkwardness of the teenagers because it was realistic to me. Even though some of the words they would use all the time just be like, you're doing too much, okay? Yeah, and then a scene that... Yeah, just, I had to just give it its own little section because... That scene where they were, where Jenny and Hunter are about to have sex for the first time and they stop because they start talking about the essay or whatever and how Hunter won because he's talking about his family and Jenny did it. Mind you, they're both biracial. One's black, white biracial, one's white, Asian biracial. Um, And it's just like very funny to me because they're both very fair skinned and like, to be honest, if Georgia never, like, if, not Georgia, dang, I can be in their name and stuff. If Jenny decided to stay in the house for a couple months and not get any sun and kept her hair straight, she could definitely pass. Definitely pass. And so could Hunter. Hunter was definitely passing to me, but, well, he wasn't passing to me, but I feel like as a person of color, you kind of notice who's a person of color a little bit more easily than, you know, a white passing person or whatever. So, like, but he was a lot more passing than she was. And he was very much, like, the representation of the biracial person who just sits there and be quiet and, like, doesn't make himself, like, he's popular, but he doesn't cause any trouble to, like, for, like, the racist teacher to say anything. But obviously, you, some people are racist to one group and not another, but that's a whole different thing. But, like, that scene, the first literal prop bullet point under that that mix scene was literally cringe cringe and to find out that people of color wrote that i'm dead you wrote that i was honestly if it was the white women that wrote it i, I mean there was a white woman on 
on, on the writers list but like if it was just the two white women um writers of like the entire show like for the majority of the show i would be like okay i can let it slide because obviously they wouldn't know how a biracial person talks or like how a black person talks but good grief knowing that there were people of color when that script was written makes me want to rip my hair out because it was so cringy you got the stereotypes first of all jenny had this whole complex of not being a belonging anywhere and everybody wanting her to decide one identity even though no one ever made her outrightly choose or whatever for her to turn around and invalidate hunter's experience as an asian person simply because she wasn't privy to what he was going through i was like you're not even asian so you cannot you don't even know what an asian biracial person is going through y'all are two different types of biracials just because you guys are both two races doesn't mean you have the same experience because y'all are like yeah y'all both are white but the person of color race that you are are two different ones that have two different experiences he has the model minority mix and you have the black woman stereotype like it literally blew my mind that she was invalidating him but then when she when, when hunter turned around and was like homie jerk chicken twerking i said i'm like is jenny's father jamaican did this man just become jamaican and we didn't know it? he's a rastafari and we didn't know because i'm like jerk chicken they, they must have thought it was too racist to say fried chicken because I'm like, the black American stereotype is fried chicken. Fried chicken. When they said jerk chicken, I was like, when did she become Jamaican? Like, they thought, oh, maybe if we threw in a couple of black, different black aspect, cultural aspects from different nationalities and ethnicities, they won't say nothing. I was sitting there, I'm like, and then he had the nerve. The nerve. The nerve. to say the oppression olympics oppression olympics are you serious who who says that out loud like y'all like them writers really seen that on that term on twitter and ran with it tell me something if you want to go we can go we can have the oppression olympics we literally like people on the internet literally use oppression olympics as a sense of no one's winning when you do oppression olympics but y'all use it as yeah we can go toe toe and then on top of that it literally bugged me because how are you as a black biracial woman going to judge how another biracial person chooses to move through a white setting especially when y'all stereotypes are vastly different vastly different like it blew my mind like i'm like are you serious and then that scene blew up on twitter before i even got to that episode that scene blew up on twitter and i watched it like with no context because i'm like what even led up to this and then when i watched the episode and i'm like are you serious this is what led up to it but this is what led up to it. I can understand if Hunter was being mad and sensitive and was telling her, but he was being sensitive when he was like, oh, such and such has more at, more butt than you and twerks better than you. Like, every black girl don't twerk. But even then, if he had said that in the very beginning before the argument ensued, it would have made a lot more sense to me. It would have made a lot more sense, but all because of an essay where he was actually happy about her essay but he was like his thing wasn't even a topic of her essay his whole thing was you didn't write an actual essay that's the only thing he said he said he, said, he honestly was like maybe you have written an actual essay she was like are you serious and i'm like how are you shaming somebody for how they choose to move through a white setting when they're not fully white blew my mind like that scene was just go that scene needs to be thrown away dumped in a garbage can never to be seen again because i was just <sighs> but i did like um when it came to them having sex not just hunter and whatchamacallit not just hunter but not just hunter and jenny but like um maxine and sophie i think i did like how everybody was like yes i get consent and enthusiastic consent like they didn't make it a weird thing they just kind of be like yeah i'm really like i'm really excited like i really want to do this like they didn't make consent a weird thing which i appreciate because everybody acts like asking for consent is such a like oh it's gonna ruin the mood when it's really not but like whatever so yeah so let's get into we got some more points we got the dynamics and then the final thoughts of like what i feel overall and like what i want to see in season two so for the The dynamics i'm just kind of gonna read off the points if i want to elaborate i will elaborate if i don't i won't okay 
So I felt like Jenny did not see her mom as an actual person when it came to their dynamics. Like she did not see Georgia as an actual person because she was kind of like, this is evil incarnate. She keeps ruining my life. Duh, duh, duh. And it's like, you're very self-centered. Like she wanted her mom to tell her everything about her past. Like she wanted to be like, why is your name not Mary anymore? Why you don't talk to your sister? And I felt like, and the thing was, the sister actually had a conversation with Jenny and told Jenny, your, your grandma, was a meth head this lady was a crackhead like she was on meth and i'm like you literally found out that your grandmother was a meth head like literally did meth all throughout your mother's childhood and her sister's childhood up until the point they both ran away and you think that's going you think their childhood was easy for some reason that it could like you should just talk to you like you literally forced this woman to tell you her trauma story like, this woman, like your mother's in tears telling you and then you still had the nerve the literal nerve to teach her to treat her like trash after you forced her to tell you after you forced her to tell her her trauma story to you her child you forced her to tell her trauma story to you and then you still had the the nerve to act like she was evil incarnate like it's just because Georgia was such a nice, like, oh, like with their actual relationship, Georgia was actually very nice to Jenny having and wanting to, like, you know, give her the best. And so when George, when Jenny would be acting like this, I'm like, what? And, like, she would, like, talk about her mom having a gun. And I'm like, your mother was literally molested by somebody that was in her own home. Do you think she's not going to have a, a gun to protect her from people that's outside the home? Jenny was just disgusting to her mom. Like she had no boundaries, no respect. Like I like I could understand why Georgia kept something secret because it's not your business as a child, and it's only going to make things worse for you as a child. I just she just didn't see her like usually as a kid growing up at a certain point usually like in high school you kind of get to you kind of like that kind of like that's usually when the shift happens where you see your parent as your parent where you go from where you go from seeing your parent as your parent to seeing your parent as in a, an actual human being with actual feelings and emotions and you kind of figure out why they are the way they are you literally figured out why your mom was the way your mom was and you still could not see her as a real person with real emotions who had a life outside of you which was mind-boggling to me, like, mind-boggling. And then on top of that, Jeannie and Georgia, they felt more like sisters than they did feel like mother and daughter. Maybe because, like, so Georgia's, like, 15, 16, so Jenny's about 30, 31 years old. She still looks very young for her age because 30 is not old at all. But, like, they really felt, the way they interacted felt more like mother and daughter, except the times where, like, Georgia would put her foot down, obviously, or she would be uncomfortable about having, like, about talking about sex. But, like, her mom would, like, bring out her freaking dildo around her to pull out the batteries so that she could switch out the toothbrush batteries. And I'm like... <laughs> All right. They just, I don't know. But, um, yeah. And then when Georgia slapped Jenny, either... Jenny don't bruise that easy or Georgia slap was weak AF like there was no bruising no redness I'm like I heard the slap but I don't see the slap like could have had some bruising but make it a little more realistic because a lot of like fair people bruise real easy I feel like that slap at least gave like a red tint but she ain't have nothing I was alright girl um what did else I wrote Jenny wants to be treated like an adult but acts like a literal child like she literally throws a tantrum anytime something doesn't go her way and she's so keen even though she knows she's not fully white she knows she's a black kid who's never going to have the same exact experience as her friends because they're not black or mixed with black she's tried so hard to fit in with them that I was just kind of like you're aware but you're, you're not aware like I she just wanted to be treated like an adult, but acted like such a child. Like she would act like she was aware, but then do the most dumb, oblivious things. And I was just like, why? For what? And it was just so annoying. Moving on, I see a lot of people um, swooning over Jenny and Marcus' relationship. And like the only, I already told y'all the only aspect of I liked about the relationship. So when I'm seeing everybody swooning for them on social media. I'm like, I don't understand it. I don't. Like they didn't really show me nothing that was like, oh yes, I want this to be end game. Like everybody was like, oh, he waited for her. I'm like, no, he did not. He literally meddled in her relationship the entire time. Like this man literally had sex 
with her while she had to work. Obviously, it's not just on him because she also consented to having sex with him. But like, I'm like, y'all are like, this man is not a horrible person, but at the same time, he did horrible things. So I'm like, why are y'all swooning over this? Like, and when she denied having sex with him when he came into her room that one night, he like promptly left. Like, if this was really your friend, really somebody you cared about and wanted to be with or wanted to get to know, you would have been like, okay, you don't want to have sex. Okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to talk? Do you want to do this? Like, he was just like, oh, we're not having sex. I'm out. And I'm like, the bar is in hell. The bar is in hell because there's no way y'all are swooning over that. There's no way y'all are swooning over that relationship. There's no way. There's no way y'all are swooning over that relationship. At least give it till season two when we see them interact more with each other. At least give it then. Don't get me wrong. They had some cute scenes. They had some cute scenes. But they did not interact in a cute enough way, in a good, healthy way enough for me to be like, yeah, I'm going to swoon over this couple. Like, y'all, y'all requirements for men, especially, like, fictional men should be, the like, the time where you want the utmost in a man. The utmost in a man, because it's a fictional man. You should want him to be perfect. And y'all are choosing bottom of the barrel trash. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't really care for Hunter either. Because Hunter, I feel like, Hunter was just like, he was just there. But, like, the way y'all are swinging over Marcus and Jenny, I'm like, did I miss something? Did I miss something? Because there's no way I was swinging over this couple who didn't really like, they weren't really doing it, nothing. Especially with him, he just mainly wanted to have sex and then that was about it. Up until he finally realized, oh, I actually like this girl. But y'all got it. <laughs> y'all got it. And then, okay. And then another dynamic that really like blew my mind. I keep saying blowing my mind, but like it really was blowing me. Like it was like, not blew my mind, but it was blowing me like, man maxine abby and nora they really liked georgia they thought she was really cool and so for jenny to always be feeling this type of way when her mom was around them like your friends literally think your mom is hot and cool you won you know how many people want people to think their friends you know how many people want their friends to think that their mom is cool and your friends genuinely think your mom is cool and you're treating her like bottom tier trash and i was just like you're being handed popularity on a platter and acting like a doodle -doo head. Acting like a doodle -doo head. Like, even if me and my mom were not getting along, the fact that she made my friends feel welcome, my friends actually liked her, and it added to my popularity and my standing in the group. And you were just kind of ruining it, trying to ruin your mom's image to them. I'm like, why would you do that? Especially because you don't know these people like that. I don't care how well you you claim to have known them. You've barely known them not even six months. Not even six months. Like you're out your mind. We haven't even gotten to win a break yet. <sighs> moving on, moving on. And then, so Georgia's 16th birthday rolls around towards the end of season one. And, you know, everybody gives their the gifts and stuff. And so her mom, because they're, they've been butting heads at this point a lot. So her mom, in order to do, like, something nice, throws her a gigantic sleepover, like, makeovers, karaoke, pedicures, like, the whole nine. And, you know, the girls ended up sneaking out because they all wanted to have sex that night. For what? I don't freaking know why. It had to be this specific night, but they wanted it to be this specific night. So they go over to Maxine's house to party because... Maxine and Marcus's parents are out of town or doing some cheap something so they sneak out and so when Georgia goes into the room to give the girls s'mores and sundaes and soda because she was like oh they're watching a movie so let me go give them snacks and stuff she finds out the girls are not in the room and she like you know Georgia leaves I mean Jenny leaves her laptop open so Georgia like just goes through her messages and realize they've gone to Maxine's house to party and like have sex and whatever else and like it like it blew me like the, the reason that this scene like really like i was just like there's no way was that georgia literally caught the cops on them and that like that's what made me not like her no more you at this point georgia had been this like and it's i don't want to say it's rare but from what we always see on media white moms really struggle with having i don't know about any other type of biracial kid but when it comes to biracial black kids they really struggle with their hair they're um giving them a sense of identity um allowing them to like indulge in their black culture and history like and georgia at this point was like very adamant of georgia of, of jenny being proud of her being black and so for you as a white mom who had been so aware who had gone to a bat with a store owner who like literally caught your daughter like stealing 
and you made it appear that only the black girl got like searched for you to be so aware and turn around and call the cops on your black daughter in a house of of like obviously hunter the biracial asian boy was there but hunter was already established in the town as a good kid the camera cut off again but yeah her calling the cops on her black biracial daughter who's new in town who hasn't solidified herself as a good kid who actually got caught stealing a couple weeks prior like it just it rubbed me the wrong way like how are you so self-aware but still okay with calling the cops on your daughter because i'm assuming like even though it's not literal real life i it, i feel like it had some like real life implications with the way like they would mention certain celebrities and stuff like that so it's like in this political climate you decided to call the cops on your black biracial daughter even though she's more fair skinned or whatever, she's still like the only black kid of the group. Who do you think they're gonna place the blame on? And then you left her in jail. You had your boyfriend go pick her up. Like, it just, it ruined her whole super aware of me having a black kid mom trope. Like, it just blew me. Like, y'all were doing so good with diverging from the stereotypes of an oblivious mom that you kind of just. Like, you know there were casual races in the town. Like, you literally, she literally told you about the teacher. And you kind of just like, hmm, let me not think if any of these cops are casually racist. Yeah. I just... Moving on. Um, I'm glad when they were actually talking about George's abuse, when they were trying to decide they were going to be honest about each other. I'm glad Georgia did not lie to Jenny and tell her that she's over her whole abuse. I'm glad she lets her daughter know, hey... Some days I'm up, some days I'm down, some days I forget it happens, some days it hits me all at once. Like, I feel like it, like, is very helpful to, like, actual, like, I, let me not say actual, because I don't know if the actual actress herself has ever been abused or anything, but, like, other victims in real life, I'm glad it lets them know, like, hey, I'm not going to be okay every day, and that's fine, that's normal, it's to be expected. My voice is going hoarse, I've been talking for a minute, this video is going to be extra long, I highly doubt everybody's going to watch all the way through, but if you guys do, gracias, um, yeah um i'm glad that at the end they let they didn't let jenny off the hook for lying because you were literally up in arms about your mother being a liar that you turned around and did the same thing you're a hypocrite so i'm glad they gave her the cold shoulder and like and maybe it'll tell her show her that let me get back to the root of who i was supposed to be a liar not a liar but an honest person or whatever who <sighs> And then, um, something I really hated about it was, like, Jenny constantly ignore, ignoring Bracia. Like, I told you guys, Bracia is a dark-skinned black girl that goes to the school that they showed us, like, in, like, the first couple of episodes trying to befriend Jenny. And, like, Jenny was like, oh, I thought you didn't like me after the whole Britney Spears thing. And I was like, basically, Georgia and Jenny ended up dressing like Britney Spears. Like, she wore blonde, but she did the whole, oops, I did it again, schoolgirl outfit. And she thought Bracia didn't like her because she decided to dress as a white woman. And Bracia was like, I really don't care what you do. What you do as a person is your business. Like, I, like that's not for me to judge. And I'm like, yeah. Why would she judge you? Why were you assuming she judged you because you dress as a white woman? Are you not part white? Like, I was just like, what? Why would you assume that? But then Bracia also, like, um, made her aware, like, as much as you keep trying to talk about you not fitting in, you fit in more than she does, Bracia as a black girl, especially a dark-skinned black girl in an all-white setting because of her proximity to whiteness. So I'm like, I'm glad we acknowledged that, like, colorism was low-key helping Jenny out when it came to hanging around the white kids. But obviously, you know, it can only do so much when you have racist people out there who already, like, if they know you're part black, they're like, you're tainted. So, like, yeah, I'm glad they addressed that. But, like, I'm glad Brescia gave her a reality show. Like, you feel like just because you're both racist, like, it, you're going through it the most when you have, like, actual fully black kids who are in this entirely white setting who don't have that proximity to whiteness that you do. But they're still able to navigate and do what they got to do. And they were actually extending all the brand, being trying to be nice to you, and you kept blowing them off. And talking about something you thought they didn't like you. I'm like, if they didn't like you, it wasn't because of Britney Spears. It's because you kept blowing them off and acting like they were less than these white kids that you were freaking fawning over, straining your hair for, and doing the most for. Like, But yeah, and then also, Jeannie is so self-absorbed. So self-absorbed. Like, 
when it comes to like action wise jenny doesn't have a rhyme or a reason to why she does what she does it's kind of like i want to do it so i'm gonna do it or i feel like it so i'm gonna do it when like don't get me wrong georgia be doing some grind georgia be doing some grimy stuff but georgia usually has a rhyme and a reason to why she does it whether it's providing for her kids protecting her and her kids like she was never just doing it to just do it like majority of the time it was i need like protection or i need stability or i need to do it in order to help me and my kids and jenny on the other hand was kind of like i feel like doing this so i'm gonna do it or I, this is how I feel, so I'm gonna do it. And I'm, it was just kind of like, yeah, like that. You're not like her mother, especially when she mailed the letters to Austin's dad. She actually labeled, um, mailed them to the proper place. This man's in prison. Your mother framed him. Even if you don't know that, there should be. You should obviously know there's a good reason why your mother is not having her child, her son her son communicate with this man like you get saying oh she can try and keep me from zion but she can't cry and keep you from your dad and it's like she's literally not keeping you from your dad she told your dad to stay your dad chose to leave again but yet it's only your mom's fault she just sees her her dad on this pedestal because he's not actually there doing all the raising he's kind of just like i show up for a good Ooh, sorry yeah she kind of just like shows up for some nice times and then leaves and it was ugh whatever anyways let's get into my final thoughts because this video is long i hope you guys actually like <laughs> made it all the way through um um my final thoughts everyone is a sugar honey iced tea character every single last person is flawed every single like the only person that i the person i hate the least is joe and georgia Everybody else are either boring, annoying, sugar honey iced tea, like garbage. There was not really a likable character, in my opinion. Maybe it's Joe, because Georgia's kind of like, I'm feeding over Georgia, but I'm minding my business at the same time. And Georgia, I kind of like, she always had a reason for why she did most of the stuff that she did, even though she didn't always go about it the right way. Yeah, but Jenny, ugh. Paul, ugh. All of them just, ugh. Like, except Ellen. That's my good sis. I like Ellen. She a little, she didn't have boundaries sometimes, but. I like Ellen. So Ellen, Georgia, and Joe. But Ellen and Joe are beating Georgia because Georgia, she a little on, she, she just be doing some stupid stuff sometimes. Yeah. So in season two, I kind of hope that Georgia kills the PI. Like I told you guys, there is a private investigator that the, that Georgia's late husband's ex-wife hired and he's trying to basically try to figure it out. And he's kind of like aware that she's killed somebody at this point, but he has like no evidence to prove it or whatever. So I kind of hope she kills him or something like that. Or maybe if she doesn't kill him, maybe Jenny does. So she could kind of like get, understand why her mom did do what she did. Because Jenny, by the end of the season, Jenny is aware that her mother has killed, his name is like Kenneth or Kenny or something, like her ex-husband. Jenny's kind of aware of that only kill. She's not aware of like the first, first original husband. And, um, but George, Jenny did not tell, because the PI made Jenny aware of it. He's like basically saying, like, I think your mom's dangerous. But Jenny luckily didn't snitch on her mom because obviously that's her mother. She still wants to protect her, but Jenny doesn't want to be in the house. So by the end of the season, Jenny ends up running away, which Jesus Christ, girl, I'm going to get to you. <sighs> but hopefully Georgia comes, no, Jenny comes back because her and Austin both run away together on their dad's own motorcycle. Well, Jenny's dad's own motorcycle. So I hopefully she comes back and it's kind of like this whole murderous family trying to stop the PI type thing. And I hope like the mayor gets involved. Can you imagine that the mayor of a town involved with this insidious woman and he's actually aware of it? That would make good TV. Um, I hope that the black people that she was hanging out with because obviously all those girls are stopping her friend after she lied about you know sleeping with marcus and stuff like that um she hung out with the black kids and she was kind of acting very awkward very shy like how she was originally when she was with the white people but she's not trying to engage as much as i'm kind of like but hopefully i don't want the black people to be sugar honey icy people i want them to be decent people because from what i've seen so far they are decent people i hope they like help jenny get her life together if she comes back into town like don't let them be sugar honey iced tea like please 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 i'm not with the games just let them be good people and leave like that okay um if jenny comes back and works with the private investigator that's one thing i don't want to see i don't want to see her work with the private investigator i don't because if she does she needs to be punch because i hope she doesn't come back to try and work with him email him nothing like i know she protected her mom in the last episode by saying she don't know what he's talking about but she could easily come back and be like oh yeah she's a killer like i don't want him i don't want her to work with him i hope she doesn't 
for the PI. I'm trying to figure out why he was so open with Jenny and telling me, like, how are you going to tell the child? I think your mom's a murderer. Like, while they're at work. You call this, you pull this girl to the side while she's at work. I'm like, yeah, I think your mom's a murderer and I don't want her to hurt you or your brother. So, like, can you tell me if she did it? Can you work with me to find out if she did it? Like, you're dumb. Also, again, another POC, he's Asian. Like, um, he seems like Southeast Asian. Another POC character working for a bunch of white people. He's working for the ex-wife, some white woman. And I'm like, can they have a role outside of working for you people? Like, let me start. That's a whole nother tangent. Yeah, but like I said, season two, I hope Georgia and Jenny like are in like cahoots. Because, you know, I feel like Jenny has that dark side of her. She just doesn't know it yet. Um, I hope Marcus and Jenny, I kind of do want them to get together because they kind of build it up all season. And she kind of lost everybody else at this point. So I kind of want them to get together. But I want them to have a healthy relationship. Like, I can understand there's going to be some miscommunication because neither one of them have been, like, in a real relationship. But if Jenny comes back, I want them to be in a healthy relationship. So people there, well, that their target audience, how to have a healthy relationship. Please diverge from the stereotypes like I've been doing a show. A healthy teenage relationship. Healthy. Not toxic. Healthy. Okay. Um, I want them to leave Zion out of it. Leave his black behind out of it. Leave Zion out of it. He don't need to, because you already know, when push comes to stuff, they're going to send that black man to jail if he, they think he has anything to do with it. So I want Zion to stay out of it. Like, yes, be there for your daughter and her brother, but stay out of it. Like, I don't want him to go to jail. I don't want him to know about her being a murderer until, like, unless she's actually, like, going to jail. Jail and he got to get the kids. Leave Zion's black behind out of it. I don't want him taking a rap sheet for nobody. Leave him out of it. Leave him out of it, okay? Um, and I don't think, I think Jenny made a mistake running away, um, at the end of the episode because all it does is incriminate her mother a little bit because you had this private investigator talk to you about your mother being dangerous and so da, da, da. You turn around and say, no, my mother's not dangerous and she's not, she, I don't think she's an evil person, but then you run away from home. They're going to connect the dots. You just incriminate your mother. Like you weren't thinking. Hopefully she goes to her dad and be like, oh, my mother and my dad got in a fight and I kind of want to be with my dad and Austin wanted to be with us. So like. Da, 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 but like you dead just incriminate your mom you dead incriminate her um but i think the accusations though are going to fall through for the simple fact that jenny and austin have run away so george is about to play the role of a grieving mother with her missing children like you just lost your husband and now your kids have run away from home she's going to play that role well obviously she's gonna be devastated that her kids are gone out the house but like that type of stuff and maybe if the pi tries to like accuse her i feel like his accusations are gonna fall through because of that um yeah i already talked about how i felt like she should have just sent her first husband committed suicide because now the pi knows that somebody she was married to when she was a teenager is missing like girl you're not covering up your tracks at all but with that being said um the last scene before georgia's running before we see georgia running away and they're like looking at the fireworks and was like she basically was like oh yeah i cremated this man and then i had him be put into fireworks and i'm like this girl like, i'm like you're technically like you didn't verbally physically say it. i cremated i stole my ex-husband's body turned him into ashes and then made him some fireworks but the, the pi knows yeah y'all that's just gonna be the end of the video it's super long i hope you guys enjoyed it like my voice is gone so like i really hope y'all enjoy it and i will see y'all in the next one bye